What is your plan to invest in our youth around the Atlanta community? We will start with Ms. King. To respect the APD, I had to, I had to read it there for a second again. Um, to respect our APD, we need to start with community policing. That's and actually, that's what is your plan to invest in our youth oh, around you, the Atlanta sorry. community? Yep. Yes, thank you for that. We need to first go into our schools, open up our schools, open up our centers, and provide them with mentors because we have been lacking that and to ask what they're interested in and making sure that they have a lot of program programming. I think a lot of times too with programming, what happens is that we don't ask what they are interested in. We put things out. They're also interested in earning funds and earning funds means that they need daily incentive. Sometimes they can't wait if they're earning funds for different things or if they're earning funds even for that evening. So having a loadable card where they can get that benefit right away would be so important because a lot of times if you're waiting two weeks on a salary or seeing that money, it doesn't have that incentive. Ms. Gay. Yes. I would focus on what I've been referring to as a healthy neighborhood strategy. We have too many parts of our city that have been neglected and distressed and left behind for too long. And we need to be able to invest to scale. And I would start with creating community quarterbacking for all of those neighborhoods that have partnered with the business and civic and philanthropic sectors to help neighborhoods plan for themselves the kinds of improvements they need. And with that will come identifying what can best support the, the children and the youth in those neighborhoods. Because what we want is a wraparound. It's not just a rec center. It's not just one little program. It's not just this or that. You need to figure out what, what those children need, what those young people need, and make sure we use the full resources of our city, public and private, to provide those resources so that those children will have a decent chance of getting to age 18, healthy, happy, productive, and on a way to success. We have some examples of it, East Lake, Centennial Place, where we've done the revitalization with the wraparound services. We need to do it for all of our neighborhoods. Time. I think this is one of the most important questions and topics we should be talking about. A child born in Atlanta in poverty only has a 4% chance of escaping poverty to get to the upper middle class. Only a 4% chance in this city. This is why I'm heavily invested in training them in technology with my Tech Bridge program on uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers are learning to code, fix iPhones, fly drones to get excited about going into computer science and technology or any field in college. We also must have a chief education officer to work with our Atlanta public schools. Uh, Sharon Gay and I went to the Atlanta Public Schools Forum uh, this middle of the week where the students talked to us about what they needed and we had to give them our ideas, working with our superintendent, uh, Lisa Herring, on solutions. But also that chief uh, education officer will be data driven to be able to look at metrics about student achievement, student behavioral outcomes, and all of those things will also bring youth crime down, which is a part of the crime that we're seeing across the city. It is important for us to do things like midnight basketball, boxing, and entrepreneurship training to have the water boys do something other than sell water. Anybody else? Absolutely. <laughs> um, we've got 33 recreation centers that run through the city like veins through a body. We need to activate every single one of them, every ball field, every park, every recreational activity, partnering with the Boys and Girls Club, partnering with the Y. We have to make sure our young people are engaged. We also need to provide teens between the ages of 13 and 18 an opportunity to work six weeks during the summer at $15 an hour to reconnect our young people with work in our city. Ms. Moore. So the investment we make today in our youth is the return we're gonna to get tomorrow. The first way we've got to support them is making sure we're supporting the families, particularly single mothers, grandmothers, single fathers who are heading these households, making sure that they can make better than a livable wage so they can start building wealth within their family. Secondly, for the kids, we need to know what they want to do. We need to use our recreation centers, our workforce development agencies. These kids want to make money, and we should get our summer youth program up and running, get them engaged and involved, get them in job readiness training so we can work with our private sector partners to get them jobs and get them to work. We're either now going to invest 
or we are going to have the return of more of them finding themselves in the criminal justice system. What I want us to do is make sure we're heavily investing in the family and the kids so that we have productive citizens of our city. Thank you. Thank you.